For this solution, the first thing we need to do, as with a lot of charts, is that you can't just take the data you've been given. There might be a little bit of rework just to make the chart a bit easier. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what is the logical order for this. Now we could do a data sort, but we want to use formulas. So we're going to do the following. Firstly, I need to create a unique identifier because you'll notice that some of these have exactly the same movement. So I'm just going to create a very small number here. so that each one has its own unique but very small number. What that allows me to do is to take the movement and add this very small number. And the net result of that is that this 2 is actually 2.002 .002 versus this 2 which is 2.0009, which means that we, we can then rank them. We're going to use a function called rank. And what we're doing is we're going to say compare that number to this list of numbers and just put the dollar signs on and when we say OK and we copy it down you'll see we now get shown what the rank is of every number so there's the biggest there's the second biggest etc now we need to get it to automatically sort so the way we're going to do that is we've set this up and notice the rank we purposely put on the left hand side I've set up another little table here and I've got the numbers 1 to 18 in order we can now use a VLOOKUP. So it's a VLOOKUP. We're going to say, please look up that value. And because we're going to copy it across, I'm going to put a dollar signs on the J. Where's the table it must look up? It must look up in here. And again, I put dollar signs on so that it always looks at that table. What column must it look up? Now we could type in a 2, then a 3, etc. But I'm just going to tell it to look up here. I've got a helper cell. And I'm going to put the dollar signs on the row 6. In the range lookup, it must find an exact match, so I'm going to put a false. When I say OK, I copy it down, and I copy it across. What it's now done is it's gone, and it knows the correct order. So the number 1 is share M, share M with a movement of 10. So you can see that the movements here are in descending order. Now we can see we actually don't need these two are not really required, so I'm just going to get rid of them. I'm going to call this series maybe shares and index. We need to create an if function because what we want is if it's a share, I want to see it here. If it's an index like this one here, I want to see it there. So we're going to say if that doesn't equal index give me that number, otherwise nothing, two inverted commas next to each other. Let's just copy it down and make sure it's working, that looks fine. For the index, if that cell over there equals the word index, give that otherwise nothing. And we can copy that down. And we now have the data set up in such a way that we can actually chart it. To chart it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that area, hold my control key down and highlight those two areas. We're going to say insert. And I'm going to choose this one. So let's choose it. So we've got something here. Now interestingly, sometimes Excel doesn't quite get it right. So if we look closely, what it's looking at you can see it's actually not including these so just be a little bit careful sometimes you have to just make sure that Excel has correctly understood what is part of the the data so just to f fix this I'm going to go and say select data in this first series so you can see that's the one called shares the actual name I'm going to tell it to look there for the name and the values Let's look at that entire area. The second one, I'm going to edit it. So the name is going to be over there. The values to look at that entire area. And even the horizontal axis, for some reason, is only showing from there. So we're going to do that and say OK. And now it looks like it includes everything. So you can see it's including all the items. 
we now need to work through this to make it look a little bit prettier. So a couple of things we do, for some reason bar charts, even this goes from share M downwards, this goes in the other order. So what I would do is I'd first go right click on the axis, format the axis and tell it it must be in reverse order. So you'll see now it goes in the same order. Secondly, I don't like these labels overlapping. So I'm going to go to labels and the label position instead of being next to the axis, so you can see it's next to the axis, I'm going to say go low. So now it moves it all the way to the side. What I'm going to do as well is I'm going to right click on the series, format the data series and tell them to overlap. Because keep in mind in this case it can never be a both a share and an index, so it's one or the other. Then we need to add labels. So while I'm here I'm just going to right click and say add data labels. I can add them in. So Excel does it, so that's fine, but notice we've got zeros there. I'm going to right click and add data labels to the orange series. And now you'll see you've got lots of zeros. To get rid of the zeros we're going to do some custom formatting. So I'm going to right click, say format data labels, go to the number, choose custom and create a custom format, semicolon, inverted commas, because the first before the first semicolon is positive numbers, then it's negative numbers, then it's zeros. I'm going to add those, you can see some of them disappeared. And then I'm going to right click on this one, format data labels, pretty much the same thing. Go to custom, semicolon, into inverted commas and say add. And there we've got a chart that will, depending on what happens here, correct itself in terms of the order and then chart it in the correct order but also show you which are shares, which are indices.